You know that crayfish, lobsters, crabs, and shrimps have a hard shell. It's like an armor. If you give your finger to a lobster or a crab, you know, they will use their claw to snap it right off. So how can an animal that has an armor around itself grow any bigger? Well, here is how. and growth into two parts so it doesn't get too long because in the next few minutes we are going to dive deep in the science of how a crustacean sheds its exoskeleton in order to grow bigger and what are the implications to shrimp harvesting in the next video then we are going to explore molting and the implications to shrimp feeding if you are new to this channel I'm Jose Domingos and I'm passionate about marine life and aquaculture in this channel, I teach all things about fish and shrimp farming. Okay, the first thing we have to have in mind is that shrimp, different than us or fish, grow when they molt. Once the exoskeleton hardens up, it's not going to get any bigger. So in terms of size, that is the length, shrimp grows like stages in a staircase. The new one is going to be bigger than the old one, like here in this image. But in terms of growth, as measured by weight, it's slightly more steady. The thing to note though is that right after molt, the shrimp will actually lose some weight. Like us, if we dress ourselves naked and step on a scale, we're going to weigh less than if we have a full wardrobe on. So we never ever want to harvest shrimp when they are soft shell. If we did that, the total yield in kilos or in pounds, depending on where in the world you are, would be less than if there were a hard shell and we would lose money if we did that. Secondly, it is very difficult to harvest them when they are soft because they cannot swim or walk very well. And thirdly, who wants to buy a soft shell shrimp that feels like a jellyfish? Okay, but how does this molting work? Well, at first, right off when they shed, they are very soft on the outside, then soft then not so much, then hard, then super, super hard before they're ready to molt again. We scientists have classified this into molting stages from A to E. A being very soft or post-molt, B soft, and C hard or intermolt, and D pre-molt, where E would be right during the molt itself. E also stands for ecdesis, which is the technical biological term for shedding the exoskeleton. And how often do they go through this process? Of course, it depends on each species and a number of things, but basically, two of them are the most important, the temperature of the water and the size of the animal. If you look at a venomous shrimp with two grams, for instance, they molt around every five days, and a monodome of the same size around every six and a half days. Now, if it's an older and bigger shrimp with about 15 grams, it molts around every 11 days in the case of Vename and 12 and a half days in case of Pineus monodon. And how long does a shrimp spend in each stage during a molt cycle? According to this study here, we can take it that it spends about 20% of the time with a soft shell and 80% with hard shell with about 60 to 70% of this time with a very hard shell. This is a good thing for them. And it could not be any different because being soft is very dangerous. They have no defense. 
remember the only defense which is the rostrum in the front and the telson at the back are totally soft they can barely swim they can't jump backwards now if we look here closely we realize that they spend about one third of their time ready to molt this gives them a good time to find a safe place to hide and molt away from predators but how does molting affect shrimp farming now if there's a considerable part of the population of the pond in this stage here say about 40 percent of them and we open the gates to harvest and by the way we harvest the shrimp pond by draining it that would be a disaster this environmental change in the water level which usually comes with changes in temperatures because in a shallower pond the fluctuating is greater than a deeper pond this change will trigger them into molting so you would have to stop harvesting, send your team back home, your tractor and truck drivers back, and you would have all your ice melting. You get this uh, craziness. We don't want that. But what if I told you there's a way to track the molting stage so you can time the harvest and what I just pictured will never happen to you. And you harvest them when they have the hardest shell on. This is what I love about biology. Yes, there is. The answer is in the base of the Europod and more specifically the base of this red hair at the edge of the Europod. All we need to do on the day before we want to harvest is to cut a tiny piece of the tip of the Europod of about 20 to 30 shrimp. Then you can lay them down onto a microscope slide and in less than five minutes figure out what is the proportion of the population in the pond in each stage of the molting cycle so you know if you are safe to harvest or not and you will harvest them when they are the heavier let's quickly go through the different mold stages by looking at the tip of the europod basically when they are soft there is a lot of red pigmentation right here at the base of each hair as they harden the very base loses the pigment we start to see a defined line and as they are completely hard there is a bit of separation between the base of the hair and the epidermis this spacing keeps enlarging until we can see the new hair coming underneath it and pushing the old carapace out i don't expect you to memorize all of this so the best is to have this concept in mind and have this scheme printed out on the wall of your lab for reference but it's quite easy then to see what stage they are at. One interesting thing about shrimp is that they normally tend to molt together. This molting is somewhat regulated by the moon cycle and the weather patterns. Sometimes a heat wave or a cold front can trigger a molting uh, massively in the population. What I have found though is that if the environment is very, very stable and constant, which is the case of intensive and super intensive systems, we are talking about 60 to hundreds of shrimp per square meter it seems that a proportion of the population will be always molting and it's more difficult to observe these synchronized molting events well if we have super intensive systems we don't have this condition super stable then harvesting is going to be the last of your worries because you can almost certainly expect something like a disease outbreak of course, if you crowd them up and you don't provide them with the perfect and ideal conditions, you would be asking for trouble. So, to recap what we covered in this episode, we spoke about how shrimp grows in stages where they need to molt to grow. We also spoke about how we can easily monitor what stage they are by looking at the base of the red hair at the tip of the Europod so we can predict if it's safe to harvest them or not. Don't miss the next important episode where we will cover the implications of molting and shrimp feeding. If you learned something new today, please like this video and let me know in the comments if you have any questions or suggestions and I will read them and reply each one of them. Thank you.